welcome to my sewing room. Today we have a really wonderful show for you. It's all about tucks. And my dear friend Connie Palmer has come to join me. Now then, let me show you some of these beautiful garments. This little dress has, is made out of Swiss organdy and silk dupioni. It has machine embroidery, little tucks on the waistband. And what I really wanted to show you was the beautifully simple treatment of one tuck right here, well, excuse me, two tucks right here on the skirt, stitched down with wing needle entredeau. This dress is really spectacular also. This little dress has machine embroidery on the collar. It is a handkerchief linen. Here is Madeira applique. And then as we go down to the skirt of the dress, you will see absolutely magnificent tucks with tatting right underneath the tucks and more Madeira applique on the bottom of the skirt. And the tucks are stitched down with wing needle entredeau. This is a truly, truly magnificent christening dress. This dress has smocking at the top beautiful hand smocking and then the little ribbons are tied and then come down the skirt let me try to open it a little bit for you here come down the skirt to see the tucks it even has a little mock k e k on it 12 8 98 the there are some handkerchiefs built into these little triangular pieces and you can see the use the lavish use of tucks all the way down the front of this beautiful dress and the antique handkerchiefs in the front of the dress also I have another magnificent christening dress here to share with you. It has beautiful tucks and a panel that comes out in a triangularly shaped. Can you see the three little tucks? One, two, three, one, two, three. In many, many of my antique christening gowns, I find the use of three tucks. There are several different shades of ecru laces and antique Swiss insertions. Absolutely magnificent. This is another very unusual dress, another christening dress with tucks. The dress has tucks on the sh on the uh, at the top, a really pretty collar, and then the tucks. I'm gonna move the ribbon back there so we can really see it. The cross tucks they look to be about a quarter inch cross tucks, which come all the way down the front panel of the dress, and there are some more tucks on both sides of the front panel as we go toward the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven tucks at the bottom. I think of all the things I've seen used on an an antique clothes, heirloom clothes, I would have to tell you probably tucks would be the most prominent. It's a subject I love to talk about. Come on over to the technique boards and let's begin our study of tucks. Folded tucks are very easy to make. Let me share with you just how it's done. First of all, you either pull a thread or draw a line. And, and you will know a little secret, we've done both there so you can see it easily. Then you fold your fabric. That's considered the fold line. So you fold your fabric, then you just come in and you stitch your tuck. And this is what it looks like when you open the tuck. Now let me share with you, there are a number of different feet that you can use for tucks. This one has a little blade that runs down it that you can guide the blade and then just move your needle over. Here is another foot that's very good for tucks. It has a blade way over here on the outside that you can guide along and I believe that makes a quarter inch tuck. Now let's do something creative with the tucks. We've made tucks along here. Now I'm gonna draw the lines that are gonna show me where I'm gonna do some straight stitching. These are called flip-flop tucks. I stitch to the right, straight stitch to the right. Then I stitch back to the left, fold, pulling those tucks to the left. Stitch to the right, stitch to the left, and that makes a really beautiful look. Here is a way to really embellish tucks. Okay, let's make a really pretty tuck. Then let's take a wing needle entredeau stitch, or really you could use any decorative stitch. I just happen to love wing needle entredeau. We're gonna take a wing needle entredeau stitch and stitch it through the tuck and the garment. And here's another beautiful touch. You can wing needle entredeau stitch for decoration and then put a beautiful piece of flat lace just rolling and whipping it on the edge. Come on over to the sewing machine and let's see exactly how these steps work. I'm so happy to have as my guest today my dear friend Connie Palmer, who is a Viking educator. And Connie, thank you so much for being on the show today. Oh, thank you for having <laughs> me today, Martha. I think we're going to have a good time because today we're going to do folded tucks, several different sizes, the fast and easy way. 
I like Fast and I Easy, Connie. We've, right. been, we've been hanging that's out right. together for a long that's time. Right. Fast that's and right. Easy. They're fast and easy. So today we're going to use a few accessory feet that you can usually purchase for your machines at your uh, wherever you purchase your uh, sewing machine. And uh, one of the feet is called an edge joining foot. It has a metal piece that runs right down the center of the foot. Okay, We've, I already have one on the sewing machine. So now we just need to take the piece of fabric, like you said before in your uh, uh, techniques, and you either draw a line or you pull a thread and you would fold on the line or the voided uh, area in your fabric. Just place it under your foot and you would move the fabric right up next to the metal piece under your foot. Now you must move your needle position for this foot all the way over to the left okay. for this to work. And this will be an eighth, exactly an eighth inch tuck. So it, it just really is very, very simple. You really don't have to mark or guide. It makes it really or, easy when oh, you have very, a very, blade very simple. sticking out there. Yes. However, it isn't necessary to have Not a blade. Necessary. You could even nope. use the edge of the foot to guide on. You could use edge of the foot or if you have a mark on the side of your sewing machine, then you could uh, use that. And you can see that you have a perfect eighth inch tuck all the way down. I'll fold this out so you can kind of see a little bit better. Isn't that great? Yeah, it really is it's pretty. Perfect. And Connie, I love those folded tucks. I love double needle right. tucks too. Oh, I do but too. But folded tucks were what we really used. Right. You know those beautiful things right. I showed at the beginning? Those yes. are folded tucks. Right. What else do you have for Okay, us? now. <clears throat> now we're going to use an edge stitch foot. It's very similar to the first one, only this one has a blade on the side of the foot. So this way, you would be able to use all ranges of your needle positions. So we'll snap this foot on. We'll leave it. We're going to move our needle over so that it's exactly at a quarter of an inch from the edge of the foot. Now we'll place another piece of fabric under the foot. And now the same thing applies. You move the folded edge of the fabric right next to the blade uh, of your foot. And you just sew. This is exactly a quarter of an inch tuck. You know, perfection is a really important thing right. in tucks. Well, it is if you're trying to line all those tucks up on a skirt. And you make know, those wanna... beautiful strips. You know what, Connie, right. I've, I've seen a lot of people do? It's just to make a long strip of tucks and then slice them up into pieces right. to be inserted right. in the dress. Instead of an embroidered insertion, you could mm -hmm. use a tucked insertion. Okay. Okay. So now, Connie, thing. Okay, show us real quickly on that other one too. All right. About those stitching, those tucks, those flip flop tucks. The flip flop tucks. Okie dokie. This one we would need to snap on the edge joining foot, which had the blade right down the center, and we've made all the uh, quarter inch tucks, just sewn sewn them, and then marked them in one inch increments. Now this is fascinating to me. I'm going to put my needle right back in the center. Okay. And we will sew right down that line, and the blade in the foot is going to move those tucks That's a mess. straight up. You see? You don't even have to hold them. You, you do not have to hold them. You wouldn't stick or anything, it just, do you? It just moves them up. Oh. And then on the next row, you would just sew the opposite way, and then sew, you know, keep sewing like that. Connie, thank you so much for sharing You're those sure techniques. You're sure welcome. You're sure welcome. And now we have some lovely lingerie. Connie has created the most beautiful camisole for all of our Martha's Sewing Room viewers. It is absolutely out of this world with the beautiful laces, the machine embroidery, and the release tucks. Connie, you're just such an unbelievable designer. Show us how you did this, please. I'd be glad to. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I think today, uh, this, this afternoon, we're going to focus on the release tucks. We did the uh, other tucks before, and so this was our last tuck was the release tuck. But the very first thing, we're going to go through all the steps of the camisole. The very first step would be to do all of your embroidery. I'm fortunate enough to have a very large hoop. So I was able to do all my embroidery in one step. So you would do all of your embroidery. And while your embroidery is still uh, on one piece of fabric, you would, you would be able to shape your lace um, with your flip-flop, you know, with your miter method, your, your favorite miter method. So just shape all of your lace, get all your pieces cut out. Those are your tabs. We're going to do it in parts so that it'll be a little bit easier for you and it won't be quite so stressful. <laughs> so now we're going to do the tucks. 
you would uh, mark all of your tucks across your uh, camisole first. That's the best thing to do. Rather than shape your lace onto the fabric and then do the tucks, we're going to just do the opposite. So we've marked all our tucks. I'm going to fold on my line. And what are these quarter inch tucks? These, are, inch these tucks? are eighth inch tucks. Eighth inch tucks, okay. We're going to use the same foot we used before, the edge joining okay. foot. I'm going to start out with my needle uh, you know, over in the left hand position. I'm going to sew from the top down to my line. And that's where I'm going to stop. I'm going to touch stop and fix. It's going to sew, tie off. If you don't have a stop and a fix, you would then uh, use a reverse, and you would just re do a little small stitch. You can see how that uh, it stops, and that's what gives you your fullness. And you just clip off those little tails. Clip off those little tails. And you tails. don't have to do anything no, else because nothing. it's already fixed. It's already it? fixed. Do you remember when we used to pull everything oh, to the back and tie them off? <laughs> it was terrible. So you can see, now you would have okay. done all your tucks. Okay. Uh -huh. You would now take your little tabs and place them in the middle. And that's why I say this is, it's not so stressful to do it this way because now you have a little fudge point here. You can either move your, see your tab back or forth. And then you would just uh, sew your t all your tabs I onto your I loved your uh, point de Paris stitch you did. Right. I think you said you used a what, a one? A 120 uh, top stitch. Top you stitch needle rather than a wing needle. Oh, right. honey, it was gorgeous. Sometimes that's a little kinder to the lace. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now. Once we get all of our tabs sewn onto the camisole, you can see what we have now. We have all the tabs, we have all of the pin tucks sewn together, and then you would lay your whole block piece onto your pattern piece and cut it out. Sew up your side seam. Then you would shape your lace across the top of your uh, camisole and zigzag that on. The next uh, the last thing that you would have to do is just shape your edge lace on. It's much easier if you shape the edge lace and then I scotch tape it together. <laughs> I use a little piece of scotch tape Connie, I and love you it. can now quickly this is scotch tape right, sewing. Okay. Right. Instead of pinning it on, it's a little simpler. Oh now you can just take the lace over to the sewing machine, zigzag these together. And if you want to use an edge joining foot, you, you can. You could use an edge joining foot, but or just, just a plain sure. old foot. Exactly. Okay. Before you get to the tape, take your tape no, off. You don't sew through and that scotch No, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> you won't like it when you go to iron it if you no, <laughs> stitch no. it. No, no. Oh, Connie, And I that love just it. makes it so fast. I think in all the years of Martha sewing, we have not had a scotch tape sewing technique oh. yet. I just love it. That's great. Let me show everybody once again this magnificent camisole. Truly, one of the, it, it is a masterpiece, Connie. And I, I like the fact that you did all the pieces and then you cut it out. Right, and you it put it on your fast. master pattern. Right. And then you scotch too. Oh, right. just, oh, this is absolutely wonderful. I just thought everybody would like to see this beautiful thank camisole you. once again. Great. Connie, thank you so much for You're bringing sure your welcome. easy and fast techniques. You're sure. And now I have a home decorating project for you. to share with you some lace shaping on this beautiful green silk dubioni pillow that really isn't lace shaping at all but rather designer fabric shaping. This pillow is absolutely beautiful. It would go into any tailored room, any living room or or, or family room. It has it has all the heirloom techniques with a non-heirloom look. Isn't that a wonderful pillow? Here is all in the world there is to that pillow. Cut your 15 inch square of green silk dubioni. I'm going to stitch down my little square of designer fabric in the middle and then I'm going to draw my angling lines out and with this really good looking piece of designer ribbon I'm going to do some lace shaping except I'm not going to be shaping with lace. I'm going to miter this ribbon. Okay, I'm going to go a pin on the inside and I drew those lines out there so I'm going to go a pin on the outside. Remember how we do a miter with lace? I'm going to pull it back on itself remove the inside pin that goes through two layers and I'm going to fold it over. Now if there's a little piece sticking out as we have there, don't worry, a little bit later we're going to mush it under. All right, let's go ahead and make another miter. I'm going to do a pin on the, let me get the inside right there. I'm going to do a pin on the outside because I drew that miter line. I'm going to fold it back on itself 
remove the inside pin that goes through two layers and another perfect miter has been folded in. Just kind of mash it down a little bit and I'm going to press it. That pin's making it stick up a little bit. There we go. Now that I'm going to come along the line, I'm going to do once again a pin on the inside, a pin on the outside line I drew. I'm going to fold it back on itself remove the inside pin, bring it down, and once again when I close off a miter at the bottom, I don't fold it back on itself, I turn it back under itself like this, and I'm going to chop off the tail, I have a beautiful miter around there, I'm going to zigzag the inside first, I'm going to come in and chop off all of these little pieces that stick out, I'm going to zigzag the outside, zigzag over the miters, and finish up my pillow by putting another square on top of it, stitching all the way around, turning it, and stuffing it. Now if that isn't a beautiful pillow to use in any room in the house, I don't know what is. Next I have a really fun craft to present to you. One of my favorite things to do is to go into those beautiful, very, very fancy gift shops and look at all those really pretty things for the bathroom and the bedroom. And I kind of uh, thought this would be fun to have some of those beautiful things that are so pricey in those stores. Let's just make something really beautiful and very inexpensive. We have three items for you for your craft today. This is a little night light. Now, of course, it's not plugged in, so I won't get any light when I turn it, but a little night light with really pretty pink and ecru petals on it. I'll tell you, I have seen so many beautiful um, switch covers. This one is done out of green silk dubioni with little purchase flowers that have simply been glued on it. And if you want to do a really pretty little potpourri, use a bar of scented soap and then I'm going to show you just how easy it is to make all of these three things. These are truly easy and these are things that would be really nice gifts or just a gift for yourself to make your own house look like it has that designer touch. Okay, let's get a little switch plate. Doesn't matter how inexpensive. This one just came from a discount store. Get, we used green silk dupioni. You turn the switch plate over and wrap it around and glue it and cut it and trim it and then after you've done that come in and just place the flowers any way you want to place them. Let me bring the original one back here to show you how pretty ours is. After we did all of the, you know, the cutting and the pasting and the gluing, this is just really easy and it would make an elegant present to give to anyone, just find out the colors of their bedroom and I think most any lady would be thrilled with that. Now the second one, which was really easy also to make, is a little um, potpourri. And it's really not to bathe with, it's just to make a nice smell. Now then, let me show you what we've done here. I've gotten a pretty, a nice bar of soap, a really good bar of soap. And we have used yellow and pink and ecru netting. Okay, I put the nice bar of soap right in. Isn't that pretty the way that kind of pulls up together? Then I have a little bit of ribbon. Just tie the ribbon around there. I'm not going to tie it right now. Let me just show you one more thing to stick some little flowers in. And finally, you have a little potpourri. And that's also really pretty just to put in your bathroom or put anywhere you'd like a, a nice smell. Now then you can also, let me give you one other alternative on this. If you have a pretty handkerchief that you would like to use, you know something's really nice to do. If you have handkerchiefs that belong to your mother or your grandmother, it's really nice to do things like this so they won't be just kind of thrown away in a box somewhere. All right, you can use a pretty handkerchief, wrap it up, twist it a little bit to where the, uh, where the design shows. You can tie it, probably wouldn't tie it, I don't know, it's all right tied with pink. You can tie it and then if you wanted to put some flowers in you could, but really if you have some pretty embroidery on it, that's all you need to do. That's another little really nice gift item. Now this is a fun gift also, the little um, night light. These come just in any discount store. You just buy, the, actually I've kind of dismantled this one a little bit so we could glue it. That one will slip right back on. Now here are the little flowers. You know, you've seen these anywhere you go into a place that has the silk flowers. Just cut, just pull off the little buds, the little petals. And if you, if you really want it easy to glue, you can pull them off and dismantle them even, even further. Pull all of the plastic part off like this and then just glue it on just glue it on all over the little shade that goes on the night light. And this really does make a pretty little gift, a pretty little night light. 
Here is the la here is the one after it's finished, and I really think I have a pink bedroom, so this one's going to go home with me. But I think it's really fun to make items like this, and if you go into the gift shops, they have absolutely exorbitant prices on them. Now, won't you come along with me to my attic, where I have something really, really special for you. Since this is the show on folded tucks, I thought we would share this absolutely beautiful garment that is really a, a part of Sue Houseman's personal collection. The garment is made out of cotton netting and has a beautiful uh, embroidery on it. I don't know if it came from England or came from Switzerland. Actually, both of the countries did make and do make embroidered cotton netting. Right here down the front is a little panel of tucks, folded tucks. Can you see how the scalloping of the netting goes around like this? And then those folded tucks go down the middle. Now I'm going to pick up this skirt a little bit because I think it'd be a little bit easier for you to see. The whole skirt is, of course, netting and has folded tucks. And there are oh, several different sizes, to tell you the truth. Not really a big variation in sizes. Uh, it was traditional with antique clothing to do all of the tucks by hand. Even if they had a sewing machine to sew straight stitching for part of the rest of the dress, they still tended to put the tucks in by hand. Now, I'm going to pick this dress up just a little bit more to show you a real interesting feature here on the ruffle. Now, you see, really, the dress has a double ruffle. And right below this tuck, it has been hem stitched on. Hem stitching machines were, you know, treadle hem stitching machines came into an existence, oh, mid 1800s, 1857, somewhere around there. And apparently, this woman was uh, able to have be able to have one of these hem stitching machines. They were not really easy to come by, but she has put her hem stitching there. And I just thought this was a very, very interesting dress that Sue loaned us for the show on tucks. For our Sewing from the Heart segment, I have a letter here from Richard and Rita Combs. They are the owners of Sew Motion in Pine Top, Arizona. Dear Martha, you asked for stories about volunteer sewing. The following story started this last March and is still going on. I hope you can use it. And they write, people will help in times of need. My wife Rita and I own Sew Motion in Pine Top, Arizona. At a recent sewing event called Sew so Spectacular, a customer requested a comfort cap pattern. The cap is basically a fashion smart turban for people suffering from temporary hair loss. A friend of ours, Ted Rawls, located her a free pattern. My wife then offered them to anyone for the asking. Finally, one of our customers suggested the Sew Motion Sewing Club make caps for people who did not or could not sew. A single request soon resulted in dozens of finished comfort caps. And once again, that's from Rita and Richard Combs, owners of Sew Motion in Pine Top, Arizona. You know, it's just amazing to me how wonderful people are, and especially how wonderful sewing people are, men and women, because there are a lot of men who sew or who are involved in sewing businesses. The goodness of people's hearts just always amazes me, and I, I have a feeling you know about the same thing. People are using their sewing machines more and more for volunteer work to helping those less fortunate. And maybe you don't have anyone that you really want to sew for right now, well, I'll, maybe even any children. I'll tell you there are plenty of foster children or children right around the corner from you, all kinds of children who really have never had a pretty dress. So just look around you. I promise you there is someone who will truly treasure any kind of sewing that you're willing to do for them. Thank you so much for joining me in my sewing room today. I've had a wonderful time. I hope you've had a wonderful time and learned a lot about tucks also. We do so appreciate your coming to visit us. Thank you for coming, and I would like to invite you to come see us again next time.